Welcome back and with us live over the phone is uh, Dr. Dia Hilmi el -Fi. He is a member of the Egyptian Council for Foreign Affairs and CEO of the Arab Union for Training and Council of Arab Economic Unity. Good morning, uh, Dr. Radia. Good morning. How are you doing, sir? Uh, Everything is okay. Our pleasure. Uh, how do you see the efforts to contain the recent crisis in the region and what effective solutions have to be taken from your own point of view? In the Egyptian and the Arab efforts are very strong, really. Mm. And the most important thing is that this uh, effort serious, fair, and logical effort. Here I would like to mention that uh, the Israeli side and certainly the United States of America must realize that, that conflict, crisis, military escalation, and killing civilians will not be the solution uh, anyway, but will be the problem. Right. So how do you, uh, um, on Thursday, of course, uh, President uh, al-Sisi and King Abdullah II, they, ha they held uh, summit talks in Cairo to discuss the de-escalation in the Gaza war. How do you see the significance of the summit talks and where do you think those summit talks are going to take uh, the crisis inside the Palestinian territory? Uh, actually, the permanent coordination between Egypt and Jordan is very important, especially mm. in this case, in this, you know, uh, uh, context of uh, finding real solutions to the Palestinian issue. The summit held yesterday between the two leaders, President Sisi and King Abdullah, was really successful and useful to the problem as it gave uh, international messages to all parties to the conflict, as both sides have framed that any attempt to displace the Palestinians to Egypt or Jordan is rejected. The two sides also stressed the need to immediately stopping this war in Gaza, and also they stressed the need for the Palestinian people to achieve their rights and establish their uh, independent state on the lines of June 4, 1967. Right. Uh, the president earlier had tackled the issue of Gaza and of the Palestinian cause several times. Uh, this is not the first time uh, to be uh, tackled in that particular summit. So if you would like to elaborate on the statements uh, of the president, I mean, before the escalation, the president had been keen on uh, Egypt being taken uh, a, a lead role in resolving or sorting out uh, the Palestinian crisis. And there were lots of efforts taken on the Egyptian side to be able to uh, resolve this crisis. Uh, so, uh, uh, respectively, uh, what's your assessment of the Egyptian side and uh, the statements in particular taken by President Abdel Fattah Sisi? Uh, really, regarding the Palestinian issue, and even the Gaza before this crisis and during this crisis, uh, President Sisi was clear and frank as he stressed many times about the importance and the necessity of, uh, you know, solving this problem in Gaza and solve even the, the case itself, the Palestinian uh, problem. He also pointed out the importance during, I mean, during the crisis, this war, uh, he pointed out the importance of establishing a Palestinian state in the time and suggested that it should be within the framework of the two-state uh, solution, maintaining peace forever for this area, for the Middle East, and security also in the region, and avoiding escalation so that things don't get out of control uh, any time. Uh, His Excellency, Mr. President Sisi, uh, uh, cleared everything to the international community many times. And maybe this crisis uh, gave us the answer for this question. Now, every uh, some years, uh, there is a problem, there is, you know, something out of control. Uh, it's not the way. 
Right. Uh, how do you evaluate the Egyptian efforts to contain the situation and uh, grant the arrival of humanitarian aid to Gaza? Uh, in your own assessment, uh, what are the required steps by, by the regional and international levels? Let us first start uh, step by step. Talk about the, uh, Egypt containing the, si the current situation and working hard uh, to deliver the humanitarian aid inside Gaza to the victims and the families of the victims and the people there who are under uh, the siege. And, uh, of course, they are um, uh, cut out of uh, all means of food and electricity and Internet and everything. Uh, Egyptian efforts now in this crisis, in the middle of this problem, to bring uh, humanitarian uh, aid uh, into Gaza, uh, really have not stopped for a single moment since the beginning of the crisis on October 7. There were international uh, contacts, you know, with senior uh, world leaders in order to achieve uh, this goal. And the Egyptian diplomacy, uh, represented by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Sameh Shokri, took action by uh, meetings uh, with uh, foreign ministers of several countries in Cairo and uh, conducting many international diplomatic negotiations in order to uh, protect uh, civilians in Gaza and to stop the war immediately. Uh, for the second part of the question about the uh, required at uh, the regional and the international level, we can say an immediate stopping to all military operations uh, and uh, protection of civilian in Gaza and, uh, you know, uh, the holding of an international conference uh, to uh, permanently end the Palestinian-Israel conflict and achieve, uh, uh, you know, a just peace to ensure the security of the region uh, within the framework of establishing a Palestinian state based mm -hmm. on uh, international uh, resolutions in this regard. Right. Uh, when you talk about uh, uh, the international aid or uh, collaboration of, uh, on an international level and regional level in other countries, there should be a consent uh, between all those countries on one target, which is the best interest of the people that are entrapped inside Gaza and also uh, the, the, the siege of uh, the uh, exchange of, uh, I mean, a military confrontation. So do you expect that there could be some uh, um, agreements between countries on that particular uh, aim? I think, I think it will be, you know, uh, very soon, maybe within an hour, we are talking, even today morning, they are talking about a solution, to, you know, to send food, uh, you know, uh, and the water, and back again the electricity, uh, you know, the medicine to the people there. And I'm sure that uh, maybe by tomorrow, Saturday, uh, maybe we'll uh, see uh, some solutions in this issue. Right. Uh, in a press conference earlier, President Abdel Fattah Sisi said Israel's apparent tactic to displace the Palestinians in Sinai is not acceptable by any means or uh, enforceable. Uh, to any country and would only expand the area of conflict. Of course, this makes a lot of sense, not only to Egypt, but to any country. You can't just uh, displace uh, people from their land on the expense of, uh, of another country. I mean... Exactly, exactly. So exactly. how does the Israeli uh, uh, side think? And uh, uh, if you would like to elaborate over the statement of President Abdel Fattah Sisi. Uh, uh, Mr. President, His Excellency Abfattah Sisi was very clear in this uh, comment uh, on, on the Israel tactic to displace the Palestinians to Sinai. First, uh, he mentioned that this is not acceptable. First, and after that, we should uh, uh, tell them, and we told them already, he even said that Israel uh, you know, uh, plan and tactic in this issue is not even uh, implementable. They cannot do that, not only to Sinai or 
to any other country, even Jordan, mentioned and uh, very political and deep wisdom. Uh, Mr. President Sisi said that this Israel idea will increase the conflict in the region and will uh, completely destroy the peace process with Egypt, with Jordan, in the region. Uh, thus, I believe that uh, uh, clarifying the danger and serious negative effects of Israel's plan or tactics gave the world a clear idea of the serious, uh, seriousness of it. We also, uh, you know, shed light on Israel's intention to make uh, a failed attempt to change uh, the, you know, the course of the Palestinian issue. Of course. Uh, so, uh, to what extent are these attempts of displacements and uh, uh, targeting the, the innocent Palestinian uh, uh, f families, uh, the women and children, and uh, killing of uh, the people, the residents, and bringing down their houses and demolishing everything? Uh, how is that going uh, to uh, liquidize the Palestinian cause? And how is that going to uh, weaken? Uh, the side of the Palestinian cause, uh, where do you see the solution could be? The, of course, first step is the arrest of uh, exchange of fire. Of course, uh, it goes to that. You know, so. all what Israel is doing now for killing people and the kids and, you know, and women, uh, it's not, it's not uh, fair. Everybody now in the world know that this is not uh, the solution. And they, will, they cannot, they will not, a uh, liquidation of the Palestinian uh, uh, case. You know, uh, certainly the uh, attempt and the display the Palestinians from their land will fail. And of course, it was an Israeli attempt very clear to settle the issue publicly. And uh, the matter does not require uh, analysis or understanding. No, it's very clear. Uh, the meaning of displacing uh, the owners of the land is clear to everybody. And its uh, purpose is uh, to end the issue uh, we'll say. But this is not uh, longer possible also after uh, Egypt uh, revealed uh, this matter to the world and after what we uh, say everywhere, negotiations with the leaders to, uh, you know, uh, Say what what Israel is doing, and everybody now uh, from the big leader, the international community, know that it should be this case to solve it forever. Mm, right. Um, since you, we were talking about that particular issue, the brutality that is being committed against the innocent Palestinians, the killing of children and the victims and uh, uh, crossing the border, the red line, and violating the international law and legitimacy of wars and everything by Israel. How is that going to maybe change the sense of the United States, uh, the, 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 the staunch supporter of Israel and the backbone for Israel? Uh, lately, you have seen a change of the, uh, I mean, of language uh, by uh, U.S. President Joe Biden, trying to persuade uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu to open the borders and uh, uh, allow uh, to stop uh, the military uh, fire and allow the humanitarian aid to get in. So, what's your input on that? Uh, really, uh, the United States. Uh, every day, you know, uh, has something else. Uh, I don't know. He said, I will stress, uh, Mr. President Biden, I will stress with uh, Netanyahu uh, in our negotiations that we should help uh, the people in Gaza. But uh, at the end of the story, at the end of the day, we yes. didn't see something else. I hope that the language of the United States is changed, but till now, no, I, I, I don't see uh, that. I see that they support uh, there so much. Uh, but by the way, there is uh, also uh, something happened that they said uh, we are uh, uh, following and supporting uh, Israel, uh, whatever, whatever the cost. So these, uh, you know, uh, I am not, uh, I don't feel good. I don't feel uh, well with this case. But I hope at least to send food 
uh, water and the medicine to the people in Gaza. Right. On that note, of course, Dr. Jia Hilmi, you are a member of the Egyptian Council for Foreign Affairs. You're also a CEO of the Arab Union for Training uh, in the Council of Arab Economic Unity. would like uh, to thank you, sir, uh, talking to The Breakfast Show. Thank you so much.